My research is focused on the use of a technique uh, for microscopy and microanalysis called atom probe tomography. And in atom probe tomography, we are going to rip apart a piece of material atom by atom, going to analyze these atoms, know what they are, reconstruct the piece of material we have actually evaporated. And with this, we actually can work out the elemental distribution inside of the material. And we use this in conjunction with other microscopy techniques that we have inside the department to work out what are the key aspects of a material that might be enhancing properties or that might be life limiting for an engineering part, for example, in a plane, or what makes a specific catalyst more efficient, or why would a battery in an electric vehicle, for example, fail over time in cycling. So this technique is actually very versatile, but the work that we've been doing in the past few years is making it even more versatile by using uh, cryogenic techniques that allow us to prepare specimens and analyze these specimens even when they are very uh, sensitive to exposure to the environment that can degrade basically when we are making the specimens. So this is really at the cutting edge of the field and this is what the facilities that we have at Imperial allow us to do. A critical example has been how atom probe data could actually help change the, the lifetime production for nuclear power plants because the, the pressure vessel that is made of steel is actually has sees the atom distribution inside change over time because of the radiations that are received by the, the pressure vessel. And by measurements of how this evolution of the atomic distribution could really be made, we could change the lifetime production of these power plants. Over the past few years, I've turned a lot of my uh, research attention to, towards sustainability of materials. If we look at electric vehicles, for example, the batteries inside, what do we do once the battery doesn't work anymore? What do we do with this? It's tons of copper and aluminium that actually will have to find a way back into the material cycles. I have a colleague now in the group actually focusing on this trying to work out ways to make new alloys based on this, the copper that comes from cycled batteries that come from real uh, electric vehicles, and also now turning his attention towards um, aluminium, what to do with this aluminium. And there are a lot of impurities that come from the fact that they were in contact with the active parts of the battery and the lithium, and this actually causes a lot of challenges for which we need the most high-end uh, facilities for characterization, all of these cryo facilities that we have been building over the past few years to go down to imaging where all of these atoms are and how we can actually improve the design of these materials for the future.